Hey guys, so today we're going to be using Spring Boot and we're going to be getting the full CRUD functionality using MongoDB. So create, read, update, delete. This might be a super long video, so I might split it up into two. In the first part, I'll be doing get and create. And in the second part, I'll be doing edit, or update and delete. So let's get started. First of all, there's a few prerequisites. So I'm using IntelliJ as my IDE today. You can use Eclipse, there shouldn't be much different. I'm going to be using Maven as a build tool. You're going to want to have MongoDB installed. If you're not sure if you have it, you can go to your terminal or console and say mongod-version and that'll tell you your version. If you don't have it, uh, you have a few options. You can head over to mongodb.com and you can get their um, MongoDB server locally or you can use MongoDB Atlas, which is like a database in the cloud. So just follow the instructions and get that set up. You're also going to want to have Java installed in your system. And to check if you have that, you can just do Java uh, dash dash version as well. And it'll tell you the version of Java that you have running. Cool. So with that, we're ready to get started. To begin with, we're going to be using this quick start guide just to get us up and running with a Spring Boot application. So first of all, we're going to create a new project. And it's going to be a Maven project. That's the tool we're using as our build tool. Our group ID, we're just going to say com dot go with chris dot spring boot mongo. And our artifact ID is just going to be spring boot mongo. We're going to hit next and create all this. Cool. So now we have this setup. I'll make this text a bit bigger so you can see. Cool, so now I figured out how to make the font a bit bigger. We're ready to get started. So we're gonna be using this quick start guide, as I said. So we need to put some stuff inside our POM. We just need to basically define what our dependencies are. So we're gonna copy from parent the whole way down to the bottom of properties and copy that and paste it in. And we also need to add another dependency inside our dependencies. And it's going to have the same group ID as this one, um, but the artifact ID is going to be Spring Boot Starter Data MongoDB. And we want to import these changes now. Uh, so Maven will get all our dependencies and get all that set up. Cool. So now we're going to create our package. Um, and I'm just going to call it com.code with Chris. And inside that package, we're going to create our main class. And inside here, we need to add an annotation saying that this is a Spring Boot application. And that's going to do loads of cool stuff for us. And now we're going to define our main method. And then we're going to say Spring application dot run and we need to pass in main dot class and args. Cool. Um, I'll zoom in a bit so you guys can see. So by the way, um, during this tutorial I'm going to be using the Spring Boot application layers. So we're going to have our web layer which is going to be like our API, our controller. We're going to have a service layer where generally you'll be doing business logic but we won't have much of that today. And then we have our repository layer or our DAO um, our database access object. So that's where we're going to be doing stuff with the database. So getting data and inserting data for now. So let's get started. Um, with that, we have our main class. So now we need to add a new package inside here and we're going to call it controller. And inside this controller, we're going to start off um, with a Java class called book controller. Today we're going to be working with books. So now we're going to add some annotations to this book controller. So we're going to say that it's a REST controller um, and that'll import some stuff for us. And we're also going to add our request mapping. And this is basically going to say what endpoints um, that this is going to be at. So we're going to say it's at books. Um, and now inside here, we can start to define our methods. 
So first of all, we're going to have a get books method. For now, I'm going to make it return a string, but later on, it's going to be returning books. Um, and we're just going to say get books. And it's going to return, for now, just hello world. Um, just so we know that everything's working. And we can test this. This is going to have an annotation called get mapping. Um, just to let Spring know that this is for GET requests. So with that, we can save and we'll try to run this and see what happens. So back inside our main class, we're going to run main. And everything's going to be built. And we can see there was an error opening the socket. Um, so I should probably start MongoDB. And to do that in the terminal, I'm going to run MongoD. Um, just for next time, we can see that now MongoDB is running. I'm using DB Compass, um, which again is a MongoDB product. It's free to download. And this will just allow you to see the stuff in your DB. It's just a client for your database. Um, so from that, uh, we can see that everything's running. And if you look at the logs, you can see that it's running on port 8080. So if we go over to localhost 8080, um, we can see we haven't defined a base route, so if we go to forward slash books, then we can see that we're getting this response that we defined. So working down in the, these layers, we've started off with the application layer and we started our API. Now we're going to move into the service layer um, and we're just going to make our way down uh, the layers. So for that, inside Java and our package, we're going to create another package and it's going to be called service. And inside here, we're going to create a class called book service. And it might really seem like overkill to have all these different layers for a simple application like this, but it's great to get in the habit of using this um, architecture setup. So now we're going to add the annotation service um, to this book service. And inside here, we're going to create our first method called get books. It's going to return a collection of books. Uh, so we need to create that entity. And we need to create that entity. So here we're going to create another package called entity. We're going to create a new class called book. Inside this class, we're going to define what sort of collection that this is. Um, so we're going to say at document. And this is something that MongoDB uses. So we're saying this collection uh, is for book. Cool. Um, and now this class, we're going to give it some properties. So we're going to use an annotation ID. Um, and we're going to say that the ID is an integer. We're going to give it the book a uh, title. Uh, it's going to be a string, and we're going to give it an author. So we're going to say private uh, string gain author. And now we want to generate getters and setters for this. We could type them all out, but IntelliJ gives us functionality, I'm sure Eclipse does as well, to generate um, getters and setters. So we're going to add those in for all three. And the one that we don't need, I think, is set ID because we're not going to be changing that. So let's get rid of that method. So now that we have this entity set up, we can go back inside our book service. We can solve that reference by giving it this entity. And we also need to import collection. And with that, um, we're going to return book DAO, database access object, um, dot get books, and save that. And as you know, we don't have this implemented yet. So that's what we're going to do next. Um, so this is the final layer, the repository layer, where we're going to be interacting with the database. So we're going to create another new package. And this package is going to be called DAO. So now inside the package DAO, we want to create a new interface. Uh, so Java class kind interface. And this interface is going to be called book repository. And this book repository is going to extend Mongo repository. 
and it's going to use book and integer. Cool. Uh, so we also need to import book uh, from the entity. And that's all we need for now. So if we needed to add other methods like find by title or find by author, we would need to define them here inside the interface. But for now, we don't need to do that. So now we're going to create another new class inside DAO. And this class is going to be called book DAO. And we're going to give this the annotation of component. So now we're ready to make our first method. It's going to return a collection of books. And it's going to be called get books. And this is going to use a repository that we just defined, the book repository. And it's going to return repository dot find all. And we need to define repository. So up just inside book DAO, we're going to use private book repository. And we're just going to call it a repository. And this is going to be automatically resolved for us if we use auto-wired, which is a feature of the Spring framework. So that resolves that error. And now we should be able to go back up the chain again and resolve all of our references that we had errors with. So at the DAO layer, we're okay now. So moving up to the service layer, we need to resolve this book DAO. So to do this, we're going to define our private variable called book DAO. And this is just going to be called book DAO. Uh, it should be lowercase, actually. Uh, and we're going to do that here as well. And that's resolved that error there. So now we have our DAO layer and our service layer finished for getting books. We just need to go back to the controller layer. So now here, instead of this returning a string, we want to return a collection of books. And we want to return book service dot get books. And we need to define book service. So again, inside the controller, inside the class, we're going to say private book service. And we're just going to call it book service, lowercase. And here again, auto wired is going to resolve that for us. This is really nice because it creates a really decoupled service. We don't have to instantiate these um, or anything. All of these are resolved for us using the Spring Framework, which is really nice. Cool, so now that that's done, I think we have an end-to-end -end now for getting books. So we're just gonna restart. For now, we're not actually gonna be able to get any books because no books exist. So it should just be returning an empty collection. So now you can see here, um, we have this books route. Um, which supports a get method. So we forgot to resolve this with auto wired. Um, so let's run this again. And hopefully it should be working now. If we head over, uh, you can see now we're getting back this empty collection or array, which is exactly what we want. So now we want to be able to fill this up with actual books. So let's do that now. And this time we're gonna go the other way. So we're gonna start off at the controller level. Um, so here we're going to add a post mapping. And by the way, we could put something inside here um, and say post, um, and that would basically mean you would have to post to this route. Uh, but we don't want to do that. For now, uh, everything's just going to be um, following this, just the books route. Um, so that's optional, but we don't, we're not going to put it in. So we're going to define this method um, that will post books. And it's going to return the book back whenever someone posts a book. And now inside here, we need to add an annotation for a request body. So we're able to read that. And what we're going to get in the body is going to be a book. And now we want to return book service dot create book. And we're going to pass in the book. So as you know, we don't have this method implemented yet in the book service. So let's go ahead and do that. And um, we can create it from here, which is really handy. Uh, so now we have this method, which takes a book. And now at the service layer, we just want to say return book DAO dot create book. 
um, and we're going to pass in a book. So again, going back down the chain, this is our service layer. Um, so now we want to go straight to the database layer. Um, if you had any business logic to carry out, then this is where you do that. So now let's implement this method at the DAO layer. Um, so we need to create the method first. And now this time we're going to be returning repository.insert book. So with that, we've saved it. And this should work uh, as an end-to-end -end solution for creating books and getting books. So let's try it out. So now that that's running and all working, I'm just going to tell you that I'm using Postman as a REST client. So this will allow us to make our post requests and also our get requests if we want. So super easy to download. You can just get it from Postman. We're going to try to post a book. So it's running on 8080 and we're posting to books. We just want to change this method to post and inside our body, we're going to be sending uh, JSON. So our book has an ID. So we can give it any sort of random ID. It's a integer. Um, it also has a title. And it has an author. Um, I don't know if that's spelled correctly. I hope so. I don't want to offend anyone. So now let's post that and see if it worked. Uh, so this is our response that we got back. So it looks good to me. I guess to test it, we can now do a get. I'll just make a new tab and it's going to be a get um, on localhost books. And you can see now we have this collection. Before it was just empty, but now we have this one book in it. And if I was to pass something else in, uh, like send this, you can see that we now have that. And if we do a get again, you'll be able to get all of them. I think we get some stuff by default with annotations. So for example, we added an annotation ID inside the entity. And this means this has to be unique. So if I was to try to post another book with the same ID, uh, we should be getting an error back. Cool, yeah, so it won't actually post it, which is nice. So just on this message, I don't think I'll be able to see the information here. I'm not quite sure why, but it just doesn't come up. So now we're going to add our database name to create a new database because I'm not quite sure where it's actually going. So to do that, we're gonna create a new resource it's just going to be a file and we're going to call it application.properties and inside this file we're going to be able to define what our mongo database is called so we're going to say spring.data.mongodb.database equals and we're just going to call it we'll call it library so if we save that and restart our application. We can see everything's running now. So we're gonna go back into Postman. First of all, we're gonna do get books and see if there's anything there. And there isn't, which makes sense because we just changed our database name. Um, and we're gonna post this uh, and do a get, and see if it's there. It is. So now going into our MongoDB client, we can now see that we have this database called library, which has a document called book and it has our book inside it. So this document name basically came from our entity. Remember we put this annotation for document um, and we said the collection was called book. So maybe I wasn't using the right word in there. This is a collection. I think library is a document. So cool, uh, going back to Postman, we have our complete end-to-end -end solution um, where we can add in books and then get the books and that works really nicely so i think that's enough for this video we have covered posting books to the database and getting the books then so in the next video we're going to carry out getting by id we're going to carry out updating and we're also going to carry out deleting just so we have the complete crud functionality thanks for watching hope to see you in part two don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you next time